It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Today, we have something very special planned for you to celebrate our 500th episode of the Daily Stand-Up Podcast. It's hard to believe it's been 500 already. That's incredible. So I beat myself up trying to figure out what would be probably the most practical or useful thing that I could give to you to celebrate 500 episodes. And the thought that crossed my mind as the thing that would probably be, probably be the most valuable would be the top five episodes. So I'm going to do a, a synopsis of the top five episodes that have been listened to or broadcast on the Daily Stand-Up Podcast. We have five really exciting episodes, five high-value episodes. Now, confession, the statistics that I'm using to pull these top five episodes are from 2021 and 2022 only. I know we were around in 2020, but unfortunately, when we switched providers, we lost a lot of data. So I am going with the top five episodes based on everything from January 1st of 2021 until today, uh, March 25th of 2022 for our Monday episode. So here we go. Coming in at number five, the episode was titled Re-Energize Your Daily Stand-Up. It was a great episode. Uh, It was only nine minutes and 38 seconds, and it talked about some tips and tricks and points and gave you some ways that you could really get excitement back into your daily stand-up, especially in a remote setting. So there's lots of good ideas there uh, about different tools you could use, about different things you could do to really stir things up, and to get your daily stand-up to be something that's more memorable, more engaging, and something that makes people happy. And that was the fifth most listened to episode. Coming at number four was called Three Resolutions for 2022. This was one of our Agile Not-So-Agile episodes where we focused on a New Year's resolution post that was made by a gentleman by the name of Russell M. Nelson, who was president of Church of Jesus Christ or Latter-day Saints, And the three resolutions that he asked you to consider was resolve to strengthen your foundation, resolve to be kind to others, and resolve to be resolute. That one came in as the number four most listened to. It was a great episode again, a little over five minutes and some change, but it was a powerful episode that teaches you a little bit about resolutions and about doing things for the sake of uplifting others and being kind to others. Coming in at number four, were the 11 Laws of Agile Estimation. This was a big one. I can tell you now, this one was one of the ones that had several thousand. This was the big jump right here. So so three, two, and one were the the ones that really had huge numbers when it came to people listening. And uh, this is the one where it goes on and talks about the 11 Laws for Estimation. It covered the work still takes the same amount of time regardless of the accuracy of your estimate. No matter what you do, estimates are never to fully be trusted. Imposing estimates on others is a recipe for disaster. Estimates become more liable closer to the completion of the project. So there's lots of good things here. There are 11 different things here. And uh, it's just another really, really substantial episode, right? And it's one that I, I dearly remember because there were some things in here. So I'm going to go through a couple more at 11 because there were some things in here that really stood out to me. So the more you worry about your estimates, the more certain you can have uh, bigger things that you should be worrying about instead. I love that. When you suck at building a product or service, your estimates will suck also. When you're great at building a product or service, your estimates will only be mediocre. I like that. The biggest value in estimating isn't the estimate, but to check to see if there's a common understanding across all people involved. Keeping things simple is the best way to increase the accuracy of your estimates. Once again, lots of powerful tools here, right? Building something increases the accuracy of estimates more than talking about building it. (laughs) How many times are we in that meeting, right? Breaking all the work down into the smallest details to arrive at a better estimate means you'll deliver the project later than you had done if you hadn't done that. (laughs) Punishing wrong estimates is like punishing a kid for something they don't know and uh, they don't and can't know yet, something they don't understand. There was a cool statistic that was given too about um, past performance not being a guarantee of future results. There's a story from 1943 at a casino in Las Vegas where the color red won 32 times in a row. It's easy to fool yourself that there's some kind of pattern, but that's a classic example of gambler's fallacy 
And when you use time-based estimates, you're doing the same thing. So there you go. So powerful, powerful episode at number three with several thousand listens. So I encourage you, if you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to it. It was originally broadcast on January 6th, 2022, but it's one of the most powerful uh, broadcast episodes for 2021 and 2022. Coming at number two, this was part of the Agile Expert Series. This one comes from September 20th of 2021. And this is an episode that I did with Mike Cohn. It's called Understanding the Agile Revolution. And this is a, a, an opportunity that we have to speak with Mike Cohn, an industry leader, and talk to him about what challenges the industry faces as a whole. How do we navigate the constant change? Uh, is there a lack of good product owners out there? Where is Agile headed in the future? There's a lot of really powerful questions and topics that we covered. In fact, this was one of the rare opportunities where I let our daily stand-up podcast go over by a few minutes. So this episode is actually 19 minutes instead of 15. But what I can tell you is any time spent with Mike Cohn is time well worth listening. So I highly encourage you to take a listen to this episode if you haven't already. It's a brilliant episode and one of my favorites. It was one of the most fun to record. And then coming in at the top of the heap, number one, the most listened to episode of The Daily Stand-Up. Now, I'm going to come out of the gate and admit, this surprised me. I was not ready for this to be in a number one slot. It aired on January 29th of 2021, so a little more than a year ago. And it's called The Best Compliment I've Ever Received. It was an agile, not so agile episode of The Daily Stand-Up. It was one of those episodes. And... It talks about a compliment that I received from a student in a CSM training. And they took an opportunity to compare me to a gentleman named Randy Pouch, P-A-U-S-C-H, who's an Imagineer for the Walt Disney Company. And after hearing his story and listening to his words, knowing that he had terminal cancer and that he wasn't going to live much longer, it was just such powerful messaging, right? And uh, I gave a couple of synopsis here. So I'm going to give you some of these quotes. But uh, once again, I strongly, strongly recommend that if you haven't listened to this episode that you do. The first one says we cannot change the cards we're dealt. We can only change how we play the hand. Experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. And experience is often the most valuable thing that you'll have to offer. Never lose childlike wonder. Show gratitude. Don't complain. Just work harder and never give up. I don't know how not, how to not have fun. I'm dying and I'm having fun. And I'm going to keep having fun every day I've got left. The brick walls are there for a reason. They're not to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. If I only had three words of advice, they would be tell the truth. If I only got three more words, I'd add all the time. Once again, powerful, powerful messaging from an incredible man and to think that someone would take the time to compare me to this individual. So for all of you who've been with us for the ride for 500 episodes, I want to say thank you. For those of you who are brand new, I want to say welcome. For those of you who have friends, neighbors, coworkers, whoever, who hasn't listened to the Daily Stand-Up Podcast, this is your chance to get them involved. Uh, turn them on to an episode that you think that they would be interested in. The easiest way to do that is to use the search mechanism that's inside. Of, so if you go to agiledad.com slash podcast, there's a search bar and you can type in any agile topic or any agile related topic. And you should come up with a handful of different podcast episodes that you can listen to. And then you can either listen to them there from the website or you can turn around and listen to that on your favorite podcasting network. So that way you can hear it when you like, where you like and how you like. But my challenge for you today is to find a way to live better, find a way to be stronger, find a way to leverage these tools and other tools to help others in their personal and professional journeys. What I can promise you is that, you know, the podcast has been so rewarding for me. And what I can promise you is that if you leverage a few minutes of your day each day to listen to the podcast, that it'll guide you and it'll help you to navigate your agile implementation and help you do things better and give you some really creative ideas, but it'll also help you be a better person. We reserve Fridays to uplift others and to help, you know, traverse the waters of what should I do next. And we're proud to say that we 
really do take seriously serving those who serve others. And we hope that you've enjoyed this episode and every other episode of the podcast. And if you have an idea for an episode that we need to cover, don't be hesitant. Reach out to us at learnmoreatagiledad.com where we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Do take care.